When replacing your cabin temperature sensor, don't be in a rush. It's going to take a while. While it's not difficult, you will be removing some trim panels that you spend a lot of time looking at and you don't want to damage them. Get the right puller tool, take your time, and you will be fine. You're going to be removing the glove compartment along with the attached lower airbag, so you're going to need to disconnect the ground cable on the battery. Do not attempt to work around an airbag system with the battery connected. In a word before you disconnect the battery. Every time the battery is disconnected, it needs to be reprogrammed into the ECU for the Macon to function. If you do not have a scan tool to do this, you will need to get or borrow one before you start. If you are planning on DIYing your Macon, a scan tool is a good and wise investment. The battery on the Macan is located in the rear cargo area. Open the rear hatch and lift up the handle, red arrow. Remove the rear cover to expose the spare. Unscrew the plastic retaining lug, blue arrow, and remove the spare. Lift the panel up below the spare tire using a trim removal tool to expose the battery. Then use a 10 millimeter wrench and loosen and remove the ground strap as indicated by the red arrow. Do not try and completely remove the nut from the stud on the connector. It does not come completely off and does not need to to remove the ground connection. Set the ground aside where it cannot accidentally come in contact with the ground post while you are working. When you go to reprogram the battery, you will need the following information. The battery type capacity in amps, the battery technology, usually AGM, the 15 space serial number beginning with 205, and don't forget to add the blank spaces when programming, and the 11 place Porsche serial number. Take a picture of the info to save you running back to the rear to keep checking. The cable on the scanner will not reach to the back of the Macon. To access the blower motor, you're going to be removing the front vents and trim panel, red arrow, all one piece, the trim surround, blue arrow, and the glove compartment, yellow arrow. Start by removing the end trim piece on the end of the dash by the door. Use a trim removal tool and gently pry the piece away from the dash, red arrow. The two vents are connected by a trim piece in the middle and make a single piece. Open the vents and point the air diverters forward. Beginning at the center vent, use a VW tool 3438 or equivalent and slide it into the vent at the 11 o'clock position. There are four clips that hold the vents in place. The red arrows indicate their approximate position. You want to get the puller as close to them as possible. With the puller installed approximately four inches and turn to the outside of the vent, pull firmly but gently straight back. The clip will release and the vent will only move forward about a half an inch. There is a hook in the trim panel that locks into the dash. While most people get really frustrated trying to release this with a trim removal tool, there is a trick that isn't even in the shop manual. Take a screwdriver or similar tools and open the glove box. There is an access hole on the inside of the glove box, red arrow. Push the driver up into this hole and it will release the hook on the trim panel from the dash. The red arrow indicates the hook and the yellow arrow indicates where it sits in the dash. Continue working your way along the dash, pulling the trim piece out. Use the puller to remove the other vent. If your vehicle is equipped with vent lighting, you can disconnect this. The wiring, red arrow, sits in a harness, yellow arrow, to keep it from interfering with the vent mechanism. If you are removing this just to replace the sensor, you do not need to remove the wiring. Just sit the trim piece up on the dash. If you are separating the wiring, there is a tiny release, red arrow. Place a very small pick and gently press in and separate the connection. 
With the trim piece off, you can see the location of where the trim pieces clip and secure into the dash, red arrows. Next, you're going to remove the single trim piece that surrounds the glove box, yellow arrows. Start by removing the three T25 Torx screws that help hold the piece in place, indicated by the red arrows. With the screws removed and using your hands and trim removal tool, gently pry the piece away from the dash. It comes straight back, level with the floor. Do not pull up or down, but pull straight back. With it off, you can see some of the locating clips, red arrow, the plastic clips at the bottom near the center console are fragile. Use care when working around these, yellow arrow. Now remove the glove box, red arrow, and the airbag attached below. Use a T25 torque and remove the five torque screws as indicated by the blue arrows. Note the position of the screws to the clips, red arrow, so that you get the same gaps in relation to the other panels when reinstalling. Also, the retaining clips can come off from the dash while working, so keep track of them. Next, open the glove box and using a T25 torque, remove the two screws on the inside, red arrows. You can now pull the glove box back and down, red arrow. Rest it on the floor while you replace the temperature sensor. The temperature sensor is located in the airstream coming from the HVAC unit where it distributes air to the passenger side floor, red arrow. After all of this work, simply turn the sensor counterclockwise 90 degrees and pull it out from the tube, red arrow. Gently squeeze the connections on the wiring harness, blue arrow, and separate the harness from the sensor. Installation is the reverse of removal. Do not forget to reprogram the battery after connecting the ground cable. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.